Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston. And today we're going to go over a CS20, how to install a SIM card, how to update the APN settings, how to find the IMEI number, and just an overview of some of the settings. So we'll take a look uh, with the phase out of 3G. It's really important to take a look at your data collectors, see if they're 3G or 4G LTE, and some options if there are 3G. Uh, we'll take a quick look at what type of CS20 you have and uh, where the IMEI numbers is uh, located. We'll take a look at the different SIM cards that are available and um, we'll go over how to swap out the SIM card and how to update the APN settings in your network rover and also some basic network rover settings. Okay, so um, let's take a quick look uh, at the older Viva data collectors. So right here is the CS15, uh, it's got the keypad and um, what I can do if I pull the simulator up, uh, I can back back out to the main screen. So I hit user number four, about Viva number five. I'll come down here and I can see is YLAN, is there a yes or no? So what's interesting is uh, a lot of CS15s will have a YLAN. We can hook up hotspot. But if it says no, there's a first generation of CS15 that actually did not have YLAN. And around two years into the product, the, the 3.5G came out. Once again, that's to be phased out in February. But a YLAN will allow us to hook up to a, uh, a hotspot. Okay, the older CS10s, once again, they do not have YLAN. So you have the smaller CS10. It's not possible to hook up a uh, hotspot. Let's go with uh, go forward with the new data collector. So that's really important. Okay. Um, also, there is the CS20 Basic. We know it's the Basic because it has the gray or silver keypad, and this one is a lower cost CS20. Uh, there's not a lot of them out in the field, but there are a few. And this one was mainly designed to hook up uh, to a, a total station. But it can interface to a GPS unit. Um, but if there's no internal radio for the robot or there's no internal modem, but there is YLAN, so we can hook up a hotspot. And there's another video that we put together to go over how to hook a hotspot up. So if you do have a CS20 basic, the route to go to get on 4G is to use a hotspot. Let's take a look. Um, there's several generations of uh, CS20s, and they all look the same. Uh, when you look at them physically, but on the back of the CS20, if you flip it over right next to the uh, like camera here, you'll see a little sticker. And right now it says model and says CS20 CDMA Disto. The CDMA is the old Verizon uh, modem that was phased out. And in essence, that's 3G modem. So when they phase out 3G, this will be affected. And um, you know, what options do we have? If I'm hooked up to a GS18, I could actually put the micro SIM card with a GAT27 and run, that's the 4G modem, and still use the old data collector. If I was running an, an older GS16 or 14, GS15, 07, or 10, and I want to keep using this data collector, I probably have to move towards a hotspot, a 4G hotspot. I'm just going to make videos on that. But that's really important, just looking at this sticker will quickly tell us CS20 CDMA is 3G. It will be affected with the phase out. The next model says here is CS20 3.75G. And once again, this is a 3G modem, so it doesn't round up. So that, that would be affected just like the CDMA. So once again, if we had a GS18, we can put, add a GAT27, put the micro SIM in the head. If we have any of the other sensors, we're going to have to hook up a hotspot to get on 4G. Um, in the fall of 2019, the new CS20s that were being released, you'll see a little sticker here that says LTE. So that's a 4G or LTE. So you can run a, a new SIM card um, or a Verizon SIM card and LTE should be fine. Um, but once again, this CS20 will hook up to GS16, 15, 07, GS10. Um, or the GS18, and we can now run the SIM card in the back of the uh, data collector. Okay. What's really important, um, and in this video, the next video, we're going to show swapping out a SIM card. And what happened is the client had an older SIM card through AT&T that was in an older data collector. 
So if you have an older SIM card from a 3G data collector, that SIM card is 3G. So we'll go over the different SIM cards. It's important to get a new SIM card. When we put that new SIM card in the CS20 LTE, it'll make that SIM card on the 4G platform. So that's really important. We don't want to have an older SIM card that was in a 3G device because that, that would make that SIM card 3G and it defeat the purpose of moving towards a new data collector. So it's important if you have a CS20, um, especially if we're going to uh, use Verizon, it's important to get the IMEI number of the device. We'll have to submit that to um, like a support, they'll submit to Verizon and that'll enable Verizon to activate it. If you deal directly with AT&T, they might need the IMEI number as well. So if you just go to your data collector and hit settings, then number eight about captivate will pop this screen up here on the CS controller. And you'll see the IMEI number listed right there. That number is what you supply to Verizon or AT&T, then they can generate a SIM card for you. So it's very simple. If you had a GS18 and you're going to use a micro SIM card in the head, the same thing. We can go to settings, about captivate. If we go to the GS sensor tab, if the GS18 is turned on, it will read the IMEI number. Once again, we supply that, we'll get a micro SIM card and then we can put it in the head on the 4G. You can also, if you register it on MyWorld, you can actually retrieve your IMEI number for the GS18 or the CS20 from MyWorld. That's another option. Let's take a look at SIM cards. Um, so once again, it's important if you have, get a brand new data collector, get a brand new SIM card. Um, otherwise, the older SIM card will be 3G. So the first one we're going to talk about is Smart Connect. This is through like a smart net. And when it's shipped to us, you'll see it's an AT&T card. And um, you can see here's a micro SIM card. It's all white on one side. And that way we know it's a Smart Connect card. And there's the number, you can barely see it, but if you zoom in the numbers right there and the numbers on the card. Now the APM we're gonna use would be lowercase m2m005125.attz. .att, -att and this is, uh, again, a micro SIM card, the small one that pops out here that goes into GS18, or the regular size, the full size card here, will go into the back of the CS20, okay? So it's very important. This is the APN for Smart Connect. If you've got the wrong APN, it won't get on the internet. So that's why it's so important to go through this. If you get a SIM card uh, through Verizon directly, it'll look like this. And once again, you can do a micro SIM or regular SIM, depending on if you're going to the 18 or the CS20. And once again, their APNs can be VZW Internet. If you deal directly with the AT&T store, um, the SIM card will look, I have orange and blue on it, similar to this. That way we know it's different from Smart Connect, but the APN is broadband. I also do lowercase broadband. Um, and I put these in the order that we'd recommend them. The last one is T-Mobile. Um, some, they were gonna have like a 2G fallback, but the coverage is getting worse and worse. And you'll see, looks like it's uh, purple. And their APN is fast.t-mobile.com. Broadband will also work for the T-Mobile. We're seeing weaker cell phone coverage, so I, I recommend the first three options. Okay, so we're gonna quickly go over how to change the SIM card on, out on the CS20. Okay, this is a CS20, and we're gonna go over how to swap out the uh, SIM card. So we're gonna take off the battery compartment and we're gonna flip the black flap back and you'll see the old SIM card. This is an old SIM card that was 3G. And we'll do is slide that little bar back and that'll pivot and we'll lever that up and gently slide that out. It's kind of uh, not the best design. And we'll leave that up. And then we've got a new SIM card here. This is an old white SIM card. So it's actually a Smart Connect card. It's brand new. So if this is a 4G LTE, we put the new SIM card in, and you can see up here is LTE, and just slide that in, and then slide that bar and lock it into place. And that's how you swap out the, uh, the SIM card. Just one quick note, when we put the SIM card in, uh, you might notice the hex end was at the top of the card, uh, on the top. So once again, we put it in with that hex uh, facing the bottom, and the contacts base in the bottom as well.
Okay, so that's that's the uh, that's how you put the SIM card in the CS20. Uh, if I was going to use a micro SIM card, we pop it out. There's one ring around it. The contacts would go up, and we slide it in. And once again, the GS18 has got a 4G modem, and once again, we can use a Smart Connect micro SIM, pop it in here. Then we'd have to set up our CS20 to access the GS, uh, the internet through the GS sensor. So that's how we put the SIM card into the GS18. Okay, um, we're gonna take a quick look on how to update the APN settings now in Captivate. So I'm gonna pull up the simulator, and um, what we'll do is we'll quickly uh, just come on down to the settings, connections, or the connections. And on the first tab, you'll see here it says CS connections. And right now, if I edit that, we have it set up to view the CS modem, okay? So we hit okay. This F4 control will pop up, and that's where I type in the APN. So in this case, it's a smart connect card, lowercase m2m005125.atc. Then we'll hit OK. All right. We'll quickly go over the other settings. Um, if I hit the GS connection tab, the first line says RTK Rover. I'll hit F3 Edit. And right now we're going to receive RTK data. We're getting it through the, the data collector. So I'll hit CS Internet 1. If I was running the SIM card through the GS18, we'd change, we'd scroll down and change that to GS Internet 1 because it's through the GS sensor. But since it's through the controller, we hit that button. Internet, the data is going to be RTCM version 3. Please check this receive RTK network information. Check that box, show only. So if you have multiple users using the same username and password, it'll pop up and tell you there's too many concurrent users. The second tab, We'll just leave as automatically detect. And the third tab is RTK networks. In this case, if the box is checked, we want IMAX. We'll hit OK. And what we'll do now is with that RTK rover, if I hit control, this is where our server is typed in. So if we're using SmartNet, I got one server called Texas SmartNet. Hit enter, F3 edit. You can type the name in and lowercase tx.smartnetna.com and port 10,000. We page over or click on end trip. This is where we type in the username and password. It's case sensitive. This will be supplied through SmartNet. So just type it in, and that allows us to get on and receive RTK corrections. We hit OK. The mount point's very important. So if I was doing a uh, hit source, if I'm on the internet, we can scroll down. I'll pick MSN IMAX. MSN means I'm getting all the GNSS data, Galileo, Beidou, and uh, GLONASS, L5, and GPS. And IMAX is an IMAX correction. So right now we have an IMAX um, set up here. We're using an IMAX source table. And what we can do is quickly switch um, and show you the near how to set a single baseline. So if I hit the star key, I got number one warp style. So we just uh, created the one IMAX uh, network correction warp style. I can quickly switch to the two near, hit next. <laughs> And let's take a look at the settings. So that's how we switch from IMAX to network correction to near under uh, work style. So once again, we hit settings, connections, or the connections. On the first screen, it's CS Internet through the data collector. Control would then show the APN once more. And if we hit the GS connection tab, the RTK rovers enabled. So we hit edit, CS Internet, RTCM version 3. We're going to show our RTK network information as before. The RTK network we check and this will be set to nearest. It's a single baseline. Hit OK. Hit Control. And once again, we select the server. And now the mount point has changed. We want to select MSN near. And that'll pick the single baseline. And that's just the, that's the only difference between the near and the IMAX is the, the mount point and the network type. And that's how fast we can change. We can just hit star one and switch from like a number one IMAX to a two near. And that's how we change from a network correction to a single baseline. The main reason we do this, if there's bad weather, storms, lightning coming in, the near might allow us to keep working if there's no lightning within a few miles of us. Okay. So that's a quick uh, video on uh, the, the APNs, IMAIs, and the settings on the CS20. So I hope you found that beneficial, and thanks for watching.